Hello friends, this video on cell cycle and cell division part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we end our discussion on prokaryotic cell division. So now we will talk about eukaryotic cell division. As I said eukaryotic cell is more complex than prokaryotes and that is why the process of cell division is also going to be little complex. So we will start talking about the preparation for cell division. As I said, for any event to take place, you need to prepare for it. Similarly, the cell also needs to prepare to divide. So here in this portion, we will talk about that preparation for cell division. So let us quickly introduce the eukaryotic cell division. Now, when we talk about eukaryotes, they are all complex organisms. So when we talk about eukaryotes, all complex organisms come into our mind. We are the best example of eukaryotes. So the cell division in eukaryotes is not that simple. It is a little more complicated when compared to prokaryotes. So the growth in human beings, we evidently see it how fast the cell divides. I mean, it, it is not even as fast as you are a small kid now and after a few hours you become an adult. It is not that fast, but the processes or the cell division taking place inside the body is happening quite fast. But those changes, the small, small changes are not very evident externally. So externally, it becomes evident only over a period of time. So. There might be quite a few questions in your mind about the cell division. Not only about cell division, about certain things which you see around yourself. For example, you might wonder how much time of its life does a cell spend in actual division. Now as I said, there is something called cell division when the cell is actually dividing and forming new cells, forming daughter cells. But there is also some time which the cell spends to prepare for the division. So you might wonder that, okay, if this is the lifespan of a cell, how much percentage of its lifetime is it spending in actual division and how much percentage of its time is it spending in preparing for the division and what is it, what is it doing the rest of the time? So you might be curious to know that. Again, you might wonder, how does a cell get ready to divide? I mean, how does it, the cell knows that, okay, I am now all prepared. I'm all set to go ahead with the cell division. How does the cell do that? When is the cell ready to divide? When exactly is that point when the cell has done everything that it should do to get prepared for cell division? And obviously, last but not the least, how does the cell divide? So these are some of the questions that might be there in your mind right now. And this is what we are going to do right away in this lesson. We are going to answer all of these questions. How a cell divides? How does a cell prepare itself to divide? When is the cell ready to divide? And how much time it spends in actual division and how much time it spends in preparing for division? Now you will be surprised to know that a cell spends most of his time in preparing to divide. So here in this graph, a pie chart which you see, the blue colored area represent the time spent by a cell to prepare for cell division. So it is actually not dividing, it is just preparing itself to divide. So just imagine most of its time it is spending in preparing and the red colored portion which you see that is the area where actual cell division takes place. So basically we can say that this blue colored area is the non-dividing phase whereas the red colored area is the dividing phase phase. That is quite surprising, I'm sure, right? Because most of us think that cell division is most important. So the cell must be spending more time in dividing, but that is not the case. Now, this non-dividing phase is further classified. This non-dividing phase is also known as interphase. 
So this is the name given to the non-dividing phase where the cell is not dividing but is preparing itself to divide. So that is called interphase. This interphase is further divided into three phases or three stages. They are called G1, S and G2. So G1 is nothing but first gap phase. S is nothing but synthesis phase. And G2 is second gap phase. So these three phases together form the interphase. Now in each of these three stages, G1, S and G2, the cell is not dividing. Please remember that. Now what is the cell doing in each of these phases that we will see a little later. Now let us talk about the dividing phase. So what is happening in the dividing phase? Again, the dividing phase is also known as the M phase. M phase where M stands for mitotic. I, I was talking about the different types of cell division, right? In eukaryotic organisms, there are two types. One is mitosis, one is meiotic. So here, the cell, this dividing phase is also known as mitotic phase. Now, why mitotic and not meiotic? That again depends. If meiotic cycle is taking place, then it might be meiotic. If mitosis is taking place, then it has to be mitotic. So that is called the mitotic phase. Now, this is further classified into two phases. The first phase is called karyokinesis and the second phase is called cytokinesis. So what is karyokinesis and cytokinesis? So these are the actual steps of cell division. So here the nucleus divides and here the cytoplasm divides and that is how a cell divides into new cells. Now we will talk about each of these stages in detail one by one. So we will start with, first of all, we will spend some time on understanding the non-dividing phase. The non-dividing phase or the interphase will actually tell us how the cell prepares itself to divide. So now that we have got this idea, we can quickly draw the cell cycle, which I spoke before. The sequence of events which tell us about the life cycle of a cell. So the cell cycle would be somewhat like this. It starts with G1, that is the first gap phase. Then comes the synthesis phase, which is followed by G2. So this G1, S and G2, these three together form the interphase. This interphase is followed by mitotic phase, which is again followed by the cytokinesis. Now, in some books, mitokinesis is followed by cytosis. That is how they write it. In some books, they say that this entire thing is M phase. That is the mitotic phase, which has two halves. The first half is karyokinesis. And the second phase is cytokinesis. And again, after cytokinesis, the cell goes back to the first gap phase. So this is a continuous cycle. Now since this is cyclic in nature, that is the end point comes back to the original point again. So cytokinesis again goes back to G1, which was the first step. That is why it is called a cycle. That is why it is known as cell cycle. So we can say the sequence of events that constitute the life of a cell is nothing but the cell cycle. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.